I got an email from a user said hey can you crack this here program and uh, well here's the tutorial for it since the program is a tracker um, basically it's a brute forcing tool for Minecraft um, I don't really approve of it and therefore I have no problem cracking it um, therefore more people can use it for free thus putting these guys out of business and Maybe they'll just give up. Anyways, it's a brute forcer. It's simple technology. Um, so let's jump right into it. Uh, when you double click it, authentication failed. You are not authorized to use this program. Okay. So let's load it up in Ollie. First off, this is one that I've patched already. Authentication successful. There it is. So let's open it in Ollie and see what exactly is going on. Okay. So here's our program, and if we run it, we are going to get authentication was unsuccessful. Oh, right. Let's start over and let's view breakpoints and delete them all. I looked at this already okay so now if we run it we're gonna see bing authentication failed you're not authorized to use this program okay so we need to find the spot in the program that called this message there's a few ways of doing this my personal favorite is by pressing pause and then Hold Alt and press F9. This is going to execute the program until user return. So now if we click OK, it's going to stop here. And we know that we were called. If we scroll in our stack, since this is, um, there we go, possibly, there we go. Okay, so our current stack pointer is right here, and we see authentication failed. And since this program was written in uh, Visual Basic, you're going to see all these API calls. So it's return to MSVB, return to MSVB from MSVB, return to MSVB from MSVB again, um, message box, message box, message box. And eventually when you get all the way down here you see return to return from message box to cracker we're looking for in its program where it was called from so if we click that and hit enter on it it'll pull us up right here so this is what made that message box now if we scroll up a little bit we see authentication failed you're not authorized if we click right here we see that there's a giant jump to get down here and if we click here we have a test let's analyze really quick there we go a test against a string and if it fails it ends the program so let's go from this jump landing to the jump double click right there on the uh, name click here click OK OK so we have a string comparison if it fails we jump so let's put a breakpoint right up here we see that it's pushing 1 push EDX push EAX pushing 0 so these are going to be arguments let's put a breakpoint right there and restart the program now when we run it it's going to break right there Okay, so that's one way we could find it. So what's another way we can find it? I'm going to remove that breakpoint. Now before we do anything, we could do search for names, uh, RTC message box, right click, find references, and we see several references. The easiest way is breakpoint on all commands. Now when we click run, 
it's going to break right here where we came we found this address earlier so it's right here and if we see the failed we see that carrot we can follow it back we can put our breakpoint and we can run okay so let's remove all these breakpoints and restart our program again um, another way that I don't really approve of um, but a lot of people do it I don't know why um, very rarely is this gonna work in real-world applications so all reference strings right-click search for all reference strings in another version of Ollie I believe it says all reference text strings but in this version it says all reference strings um, and here's one reason this is unreliable there's a bajillion to read through and another reason it's unreliable is that your strings aren't always going to show up here search for text we're going to type in fail authentication failed so if we double click that we find where it's at in the program find references to no references let's find references to no references and that is because it's in Unicode um, we want to go to expression 40 C63 eight no that's nine a b c there we go now we might find a reference to this there we go so now if we click there here we are again we can scroll up carrot at our breakpoint. So now let's find out what exactly is going on there. Reload the program, hit run, and let's step through it. F8. Move to EDX, the stack pointer, or the EBP minus 18, and then EBX plus 3C to EAX, which is a string in Unicode. If we follow that in the dump, we see this right here. If we follow EDX in the dump, oh, we see yet another string. Only it's not ended with a zero. So it's going to push 1, push EDX, push EAX, and check to see if that value is inside of it and obviously it's not gonna be so EAX is 0 jump is taken okay can we just skip the jump and call it good no we get a runtime error subscript out of range okay so let's try something else Here we are. Let's try to simply make EDX equal what's at EAX. So let's follow this in the dump. Binary copy. Follow this in the dump. Binary paste. Okay, now let's see if it works. So. And it is not zero. Our jump is not taken. And if we hit run, we see authentication was successful. Welcome, Notorious. And then it ends. The reason it ended was because of that other call. 
We don't really need to worry about that because the way that we're going to crack this is going to take care of that all at the same time. But we'll be right back to do that in just a few minutes. Okay. So to crack this, let's restart it. Stop on our breakpoint. And here we are. So let's look for a section with nothing in it, just a bunch of zeros or notes or something that's not being called. So if we keep scrolling up, we find here's a few sections. I want a really big section. Not that I'll need it, but just in case. <clears throat> and where are we? There's got to be one here soon. There we go. That's a big section. Let's take this address, copy address. Let's open up trusty notepad. Jump two. Let's take these two calls. Jump back. Edit, copy address. Okay. So let's take our jump to address. Jump. No, JMP. And it overwrote those two. I knew it was going to because I can count. Okay, so now it's going to jump here when it reaches this next call. And here we want to execute these two commands. But first, let's save the stack. So let's push AD. And then we're going to need a counter. I know this. But we're going to have a loop. Because what we're going to do is have it write the correct key to where the wrong key currently is. So now we're going to XOR ECX with ECX. We're going to use that as our counter. And now we'll execute that first command and the second command. So now we have here. Um, one of them is a wrong key, one of them is a right key. So let's hit F8 and we land here. And let's go ahead and see which one's which. EDX is the correct key and EAX is where it needs to be written. Okay, so first thing we want to do is move the D word at EDX to, we want to put it into EBX. And then we want to move D word at EAX, EBX. And what this is going to do is say, hey, Take what's at the address EDX, the first four bytes, which is 9060, and put them into EBX. And from there, this call is going to say, take what's in EBX and put it at, the ad at what's at the D word at the address that EAX currently holds. Then, since we're doing this D word at a time, we want to add EAX4, because 4 bytes is D word, add EDX4, so we're incrementing them both. And then we want to increment ECX. We want to compare ECX with, so we're going to run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F, zero. So ten. Compare ECX with ten. 
jump if less than we want to jump back to 4039D1. We want to jump to right here. The reason for that is we incremented them and now we want to write the next two bytes. So after that's done, we want to restore our stack, pop AD, and then we want to do these two commands again because that's what was removed from our function way back here. Okay, from there we want to jump back to here. So let's see what happens. We have our bad code in our dump and we are writing it. And as you can see, it's being written right down here if you watch it. Right there, there. ECX is incrementing. And when it gets to 10 or 10, we should be done with this. And that was the last one. It is not less than 10. It is equal to 10, so we're not going to jump. We're going to restore our stack and our registers. Then we're going to execute those two commands. And then we're going to jump back. With any luck, when we run it, it'll work. But before we do that, I want to highlight all this. Edit, copy to executable. Yes. Save, yes. And I'll come back to here. I want to copy that command. Okay, so now we're going to run. And authentication was successful. Good to go. So now I'm going to restart it. It has my code in it, but it doesn't have the jump to code on it because I could only save one section at a time. And since uh, for some reason it didn't save my breakpoint. So pause, Alt F9, OK, Notorious. Here it is. Okay, restart. And there we go. So now, jump. Oops. There we go. Okay, so now, code's there. Let's write this to the executable. Okay, now we can close Ollie. We can close Notepad. Don't need those. And now this should authentication was successful. There we go. Um, for any questions or comments, uh, please just ask. I try my best to respond in a timely manner. Um, I forget the name of the person that uh, sent this to me or if they wanted me to say their name or not. Some people are like, don't say my name. So uh, you know who you are, and thank you for your submission, and I hope that this helped. I hope that you guys can learn a little bit from it. Basic assembly loop was in there. Uh, three different ways of finding the uh, spot to breakpoint, and yeah. So rate, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.